Hey everybody, I'm Steph with Steph's Door Decor and today we're making a deco mesh Easter wreath using ribbon and floral and I'm going to show you step by step how to go through the process of assembling it. Uh, we're also using this sign, Happy Easter, as our uh, inspiration for this wreath. So stick around and we've got lots more. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare my sign for attaching to the wreath form. So what I'm doing is taking two chenille stems and this sign came with a hanger on the top so I'm going to attach the first one there. And then the second one goes down at the bottom and I'm just using my staple gun to put a couple of secure staples in there to hold the chenille stem in place. That way it's nice and secure for me to attach it to the wreath. To fasten the sign securely to the wreath, you're going to take the sign and figure out where you want to place it on the wreath first. And I am putting this one on the side. I thought it would be cute instead of in the center of the wreath. So once you've put it in place, you're going to take the chenille stems and just wrap them right around the deco mesh and onto the wreath form so that they're nice and secure. And you're going to do that on the top and the bottom where you've put the chenille stems. Isn't this ribbon so cute with the Easter egg picks? I love how the colors coordinate with those. Um, the larger picks and then I have the smaller Easter egg picks that are really whimsical and fun. So I love these except for I don't love the purple color. It just doesn't quite go with the other colors I have in the wreath. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. The next thing that I'm doing is preparing the pick for inserting into the wreath and I like to section out my picks into um, just into sections because I don't like to put the entire pick just like it as it is into the wreath. You could do that, but I like to disperse the color and it just gives me a lot more um, balance to the wreath. So I'm sectioning this one out by just pulling out different sections. This one's wrapped in paper at the bottom, so it's really easy for me to take them out and section them out. If you, uh, you might need to use wire cutters to do that with your pick, but this one's coming apart really easily. I decided to add some flowers, and this was a, a last minute decision to add these. I decided not to go with the purple ones, but I did like the yellow because it added quite a bit of balance to the wreath and dispersed more color throughout the wreath. So I am doing the same thing with these as I did with the Easter egg picks. I'm just taking apart the stem and this is some pretty heavy duty wire that it's attached with. So I am using my wire cutters, which are a little bit dull. And here I'm trying to use my scissors. That definitely doesn't work. So get yourself some good wire cutters to split, uh, to break apart those branches. All of the picks are going to be inserted into the wreath using hot glue. So I like to reinforce the stems and on the picks that I use. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I use to do that. I'm gonna show you using these purple flowers as an example, but you would do this on any pick that you decide to put into your wreath. So I'm using a 12 gauge wire and this is also a supply I got from craftoutlet.com and it is it comes in a rolled up um, a thing like this and you just buy it. You can also use the wooden floral picks for this purpose too it works really well so i'm just cutting off a six inch stem of the wire and then i'm going to put it right up against the the pick and i doubled it over and then i'm taking some floral tape and just going to wrap it all the way around the wire until it's completely covered Thank you. 
I decided I wanted to add a large bow using multiple different ribbons in the bow. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna use uh, this ribbon to start off with. This is a two and a half inch checked ribbon and I'm leaving about a 12 inch tail and then I'm looping it on one side, pinching it in the middle and looping it on the other side. And then I'm going to just cut it or kind of measure it so it looks about the same length as the other tail and it doesn't have to be perfect just uh, keep holding it with one hand and then with your other hand go ahead and grab the next ribbon and this is a two and a half inch width yellow and white polka dot and I thought it would be really fun to bring in some more yellow so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna pinch it leave a tail and then make your first loop and then keep holding it tightly with your one hand. Give it a little twist and then make another loop. And the reason you make a twist is because you want the, uh, the right side of the ribbon to be showing on your loops. And then make another tail. And again, kind of match it up to about the same length as the other one. And you can make your bow as large or as small as you want. You can have larger loops, you can have smaller loops. Um, just depends on what, what look you're going for. On this uh, one and a half inch width ribbon, I'm leaving the tail just a little bit longer for more interest. So the tail on that one is about 15 inches. But again, you don't have to measure it, just kind of go with what looks good. That's my method anyway. And you're gonna keep your hand holding that tightly in the middle, make another loop, pinch it, and make another loop. And then you've got your tail. And you're just gonna keep doing this with, a, with as many ribbon as you want. And this is a great way to use up the end of a roll of ribbon if you have um, if you've got some at the end of your roll, it only takes a few feet to make um, to make a bow. So um, just go for it. Start just practicing and and uh, keep doing it, and uh, it, it's really a lot of fun. When you've got the bow looking like you want it. Take a chenille stem and wrap it around where your hand has been holding it in the middle. And you're just gonna wrap it right around and then give it some twists to keep it into place. And using the chenille stems is how we're going to attach it to the wreath form. So you wanna keep those long. The next step is to attach the bow to the wreath and you can start kind of fluffing your loops and arrange the bow where you want it. And I'm going to kind of put it a little bit diagonal from the sign and uh, I thought that's where it looked the best. So go ahead and take the chenille stems and wrap those right around the wire wreath form just like you did with the sign and that's going to keep that bow securely in place. Turn your wreath over and give those chenille stems a few more twists just to make sure that bow's securely in. And then just tuck the chenille stems up into the wreath so that they're not sticking out. Once your bow is in place, the next step is going to be to dovetail the ends of all the ribbon that are in the bow. And so to do that, you're gonna fold the ribbon over and cut from the inside fold to the outer tip and that's going to give you your nice little dovetails. I've already prepared all my ribbon and I cut them into 15 inch strips and dovetailed the ends and so the first thing I'm going to do is take one of the two and a half inch with a one and a half inch and I'm going to put it into the first twist tie and you just open up the tie and Put the two ribbon in there, secure the tie, and then separate them out so it makes an X. And then I'm going to do that same thing all the way around the wreath on all 18 twist ties. And I'm just going to alternate the pattern of colors. 
So the next twist tie over is going to get this solid pink with the uh, multicolored check. And again, I use a two and a half and a one and a half together. Open up the twist tie, put it right inside, and then secure the twist tie. And then separate out the ribbon. Just keep doing that, alternating all the way around the top level and the bottom level. And here is our finished finished with the ribbon and it looks so cute just like this and honestly you could keep it like this but I like to add some detail in and this is where we're going to add the picks so we're going to get started on that starting with the yellow flowers I'm going to use my glue gun to coat the ends of the stem and I'm going to coat it on all sides of the stem and that way it's going to grab on to the deco mesh when I stick it inside. So how I'm doing this is just going right in through the sides and right into the deco mesh. And when it dries, it's pretty secure. So I'm gonna do that all the way around. I got about five stems from my flower bunch and I'm gonna use the same method going all the way around. And I, um, using the five i'm just gonna you know balance them out by spacing them apart equally The next step is to take these small Easter egg picks and I got about five sections off of that larger pick. So I'm gonna space those out throughout the edge of the wreath just like I did with the flowers. And I'm gonna hot glue to the end of the pick and stick it right in the middle there. You can see how it's uh, just going right inside where the deco mesh is. The final item I'm gonna add are these larger Easter egg picks, and I'm gonna do the same thing on those. Go ahead and hot glue all the way around on the stems and stick them right inside where the deco mesh is. And there are five eggs, so I wanted to space them out all around the edge of the wreath and just kind of have them sticking out. I think they're just super cute. And those with the other egg, miniature egg picks, I think add just a lot of whimsy and fun to the wreath and just give it a lot more dimension. And so that's why I like to add the picks. You can do them or not, it's totally up to you. You can just have a simpler wreath without the ribbon, without the picks, and just have the sign or you could have just the bow and the sign. It's really up to you how much you wanna have going on in your wreath. And like I said, I like a lot of detail and um, and variation and color and dimension. And so that's why I, I add the things I do, but you can do it however you like, but just get creative and start adding things. And you can always change it out. Once you put things in, you can, um, you can take them out if you don't like it. So just go for it and have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more wreath tutorials. And if you have questions, comment down below and I will answer as soon as I possibly can. Bye for now.